You know who I want to give a big shout out to? Ryan Miller. You know why? Because when it comes to Vancouver Canucks goaltending, the past decade has been filled with a few interesting tandems. Obviously, we had Luongo Schneider, that was a pretty big deal. And then after Schneider got traded, it was Luongo and Lack. And after Luongo got traded for Markstrom, it was Eddie Lack's crease for a while. But starting around 2014-2015, we started to see a pretty interesting pattern with Vancouver Canucks goaltending, and specifically the guys that Jim Benning would go out there and acquire. Not only did he get the young guys, Markstrom was a young guy when he was acquired by Vancouver, and Demko was drafted in 2014, but to supplement these young guys, he also had a knack for going out there and getting veteran goaltenders after their previous prosperities. Ryan Miller was the only one of these goalies that was actually good. As in the three seasons he played in Vancouver, he had a 911, a 916, and a 914 save percentage. Not bad in the slightest, especially for the caliber of teams those Vancouver Canucks squads were. Ryan Miller gets a pass. But if you talk about the other veteran, you know, star studded goaltenders of previous years that the Vancouver Canucks ended up acquiring, there's no compare. Ryan Miller was the best one. Braden Holtby was next. He was signed to a pretty beefy contract. $4.3 million a year for two seasons by Benning in 2020. And then this offseason, you had yourselves Yaroslav Halak. Thank you, Jim. Because when it comes to these two ladder goaltenders, they've been so bad and they contrast heavily with the money they've been getting paid out that it's kind of wild how we have to make this video. You take a look at what Braden Holtby did with the Vancouver Canucks last year after leaving Washington and signing that big money contract with the Canucks. 21 games played, an 8-8-9 save percentage and a 3-6-7 goals against average. 7-11-3. I get it, the Canucks sucked in 2021 and it was not a good year in the shortened North Division season that they had. But Braden Holpe was not really a big help in making this season more easier to stomach. There were some nights where Braden Holpe would just send the puck up to his own defenseman and it would be turned over, coming in with a shot as Austin Matthews or something, and he would score. Braden Holpe's consistency with the Canucks just really wasn't there, and even in this 20-game sample, he might have had like one or two phenomenal games where he absolutely went out there and stole the show, but just in general, there was a reason why Vancouver bought this guy out after the year was done. What happens when you buy out a contract? Well, what the actual process is, is you get the remaining amount of money that the contract is owed, and you cut off a third of that money. You get paid two-thirds of the remaining contract you are owed, and for Braden Holtby, he was getting paid $2.9 million in his first year, 5.7 in his second year, because the 2.9 was already paid. 5.7 multiplied out by 2 divided by 3 is $3.8 million over the next two years, which is the remaining amount of the contract that would have happened multiplied out by 2. That's the standard protocol for buyouts. It's kind of complicated, but long story short, Vancouver has Braden Holtby's $500,000 cap hit on their cap this season. Next season, that cap hit goes up to $1.9 million. Now, Yaroslav Halak, you go over a year past. Yar Halak in the Boston system was pretty good. A 905 save percentage, a 253 goals against. The season before that, he had a 919. So certainly not a bad goaltender. He was really streaky, but he was still seen by many in Boston as a pretty okay goaltender. Signing with Vancouver, he had himself a $1.5 million AAV contract for one year with a no-move clause. Thank you, Jim. But the contract itself is really funny because there are two salary bonuses. One of them is if he starts 10 games, which will give him $1.25 million, and he also gets himself a $250,000 bonus if he gets a 905 save percentage in the season. Now, his save percentage is so bad, I don't think he's going to get that second bonus, but that first one is already guaranteed. Before we expand, let's talk about what Halak has done this season. The problem with Halak, when you take a look at what happened last year, is that Halak was a really streaky goalie. Once he got that one start where he absolutely steals the show, you play him again two days later, you play him again three days later, you play him again in a stretch, and he actually does really well. He's really hot when he allows his hands to get hot. He's a streaky guy, but in Vancouver, unfortunately, he just doesn't have that because Demko is the guy who rules the crease here in Vancouver. There's no luxury to go out there and say, okay, Halak had a great game last time, let's play him again against this other team. No, 
Vancouver's not doing that. They don't have the same Jeremy Swayman, Tuka Rask conundrum that they had last year. Vancouver doesn't have that. They have one solid goaltender in Thatcher Demko that they just needed to get a backup for because Braden Holtby was bought out. Now for Halak, he doesn't get that luxury of being streaky, and so whenever he starts, he usually gets, like, weeks in between those starts. And we saw in his two most recent starts against the New Jersey Devils and the New York Islanders that he absolutely crapped the bed. He's got, like, a less than 600 save percentage in both those games combined, which is astronomically bad. His regular season save percentage this season is 883, which is quite frankly, worse than what Braden Holtby put up. Now, he has a better goals against. He has a 3-4-2 against Holtby and his 3-6-7, which is what he accomplished last season with Vancouver. But Halak this year has really not had it together, and he hasn't really had that opportunity to get that confidence back. But, as we noted in yesterday's video, with the start against the Devils last night, Yaroslav Halak went out there and activated his $1.25 million salary bonus that will be applied to the Canucks cap next year. Now, that cap is actually eligible to be traded off to another team, but the Canucks would need to add on another piece in order to allow that money to be transferred. You can't just trade away money for something else. You'd have to trade money and a pick for another pick or something like that. But long story short, Braden Holpe and his buyout is making $1.9 million on the Canucks cap next year. Yaroslav Halak, even though he will be a free agent, even though he will most likely not sign with Vancouver again, he's got a $1.25 million bonus against the Canucks cap next year too. Add those two together and you have a $3.1 million AAV attached to the Vancouver Canucks cap in 2022-2023 for two guys that won't even be on the team anymore. People were memeing about this. You talk about Roberto Luongo and the cap recapture penalty, super unfair, by the way, that the Vancouver Canucks got subjected to over the past few years. Yeah, well, now that that's gone, guess what? That three million bucks is replaced by a $3.1 million on the Canucks cap that is now given to us based off of Halak and Holtby and the services they provided. I don't know what it is with the Vancouver Canucks and these goalies. Actually, I kind of do. The defense is not good enough. The defense is not consistent enough. The defense does not let this goaltending core actually have a chance to win. Demko gives the team a chance to win because Demko is honestly one of the best goaltenders in the entire NHL. But expecting the regular backup like a Halak or a Holtby to be like Demko, that's unrealistic. There's only one guy out there who can do what Thatcher Demko can do, and that guy's name is Spencer Martin. Joking aside, look at what Braden Holpe is doing this season with the Dallas Stars, a 9-12 save percentage and a 2-7-8 goals against. Now, he still has a losing record, but he's got a lot better of a statistical profile than he did in Vancouver last year. This guy is playing on a team that kind of knows how to play a lot better defense than Vancouver does. And so, with a decor like Pullman and Hamannick and Myers... This team is just not good enough. And now, Jim Rutherford going out there saying that they want to free up cap, they want to make sure that this team is flexible with their money. It's not just the JT Millers and the Pearsons and the Horvats and the Bessers that you're going to have to think about. It's also, what the heck you do in net? Yaroslav Halak is going to make $1.25 bucks next season for being terrible. Braden Holpe is going to get a $1.9 million AAV cap hit on his contract for getting bought out. Ryan Miller was the only one that was good enough to stick around, and Ryan Miller was the only one that actually kind of screwed the Vancouver Canucks in the best way possible. I've said this before in previous videos, like in the past few years, but Ryan Miller was so good that he honestly gave the Canucks a few extra wins when they probably shouldn't have gotten them, and because of his success... I kind of feel like Francesco Accolini was a lot more inclined to push Benning, okay, make the playoffs, make the playoffs, make the playoffs, sign these guys, get them back to the playoffs, Michael Del Zotto, Louis Erickson, etc., 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 right? I feel like if Ryan Miller was not as good as he was for the Vancouver Canucks in the mid-2010s, they would have been more easily receptive to the idea of a rebuild earlier on, which would have changed the entire timeline as to where things have gone, but... From all the big-name goaltenders the Canucks have had, Jim Benning made one good acquisition, and that was Ryan Miller. The others, Braden Holpe, Yaro Halak, they sucked so bad and now they're going out there giving the Canucks problems in years where they're not even going to be playing for the Canucks. So, thank you Jim. Talk to me in the comments what you thought about this conversation over here and let me know in the comments as well, what do you think the Canucks should do? I honestly don't know what the price would be for a $1.25 million salary bonus that would be applied to the cap next season, but the Canucks do have the option to trade that away. I don't know if it's like, okay, here, Arizona, take on this salary and we'll give you a second round pick. You give us a fourth in return. There you go. The trade's done. If that's the case, would you do something like that? Because for me, I don't like 
really devaluing our draft picks anymore, especially with Rutherford at the helm. We know Jim Benning just traded away draft picks like candy, so I was kind of used to that with his regime, but there are some new guys in charge now, and we don't really know just how willing they would be to make those kinds of deals, so you can let me know in the comments all your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this British Rose 99. And bye.